the way. This is uh, probably my favorite part where you'll be the most creative. Now I have to build a facade in the front. And I want something decent. It's a hundred and, ready for this, 164 inches. That's huge, it's over 14 feet. Now, with that, I want it to look like one piece. I thought about, you know, veneer and, nah, even if I had the capability, I don't have the capability to handle that many sheets and, and get it glued down. Um, I wouldn't do it. I think it just, I don't know, kind of like, it, I feel like I'm mailing it in. So what I'm gonna come up with, I'm gonna have a post, like I'm doing this in my head, yeah. So you better, if you're custom, grab a lot of faith in me, is I have a post, 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 four of them, and I'm gonna go panel. But that could change as I start putting it together. And as always, I want the wood to shine. You're gonna see this, it's gonna be like a waterfall of concrete and then this is going to be a panel that goes in. And at the same time, I'm supposed to put, if I'm correct, if you go with the coast, depends where you go in the US, six plugs. If it's every three square feet, if I'm reading that right. So, I mean, that's a lot of plugs. Um, i have to put them in each panel. Uh, I'm, I think I had an idea on that though, to kind of keep it out of the way give a lot of plugs there so that, you know, because they, you know, they're, they're going to be camped out there. It's, I mean, it's designed way more than a family. I mean, it's designed for like three cooks to cook there, or maybe four or five for all I know. All right, enough of my rumbling, rambling, rumbling, is now I go over to the wood. And this is the process because I got all this gorgeous wood here, right? Now, with this wood, I can do some amazing things, but at the same time, I want to save this for other key features. I, got, I want to do some paneling in this job, uh, a few other things. So, I'm going to use this, this wood in my mind. It's going to decide how I make this. This is uh, one of the most critical things to do is going picking out all your wood I'm tr especially with the mahogany I'm trying to keep the grain the same or you know same kind of like tint or color or variations and it can be a bit of a daunting task at the same time I don't want excessive wastage I'm doing my post 35 inches tall for the uh, kitchen island I used to go 34 and a quarter 34 and a half even though that's uh, clearance for the dishwasher but what I found out lately is a lot of the dishwashers now they, they got a heavier insulation they get hard to slide in so 35 is good and it is better for people that are taller when you don't know, have a countertop that's a uh, another subject there for taller people now I'm milling my edges there and this is most critical in cabinet making if you're starting out have stops it doesn't matter if i'm 35 and a quarter or 34 and three quarter but that each post is exact or they'll throw you off that you you your your work's going to be crooked you can't do it with a skill saw or whatever you do need to have decent uh chop saw set up but you know you don't have to be as elaborate as two or then as as i've done i've done mine a little higher that was on my other video and i explained why but it's very very important because everything the wood goes through that chop saw sometimes it's three four times before you're ready to sand it so don't underestimate it. what i'm doing here is i'm cutting the post and i'm doing it in real time i got the island set up and it looks it looks looks good you won't make a mistake that way now the posts i'm trying to give depth i'm trying to make them look like half cut posts so i had leftover shims from the wood i milled and i'm just simply gluing them on um you know spraying out the glue uh i'm using brads not to hold them down you'll see why in a sec it's to keep them from moving so when i clamp it down it would move like if i tried to do it without it they, they would move. I didn't bother putting a dado or anything. It's, it's okay on this, on this. But, you know, you always could put a dado and you'd have a straighter edge. 
I, I probably might do the dado next time. It, it was it was sliding around a bit there, and it was a little a little slippery. Okay, now as I I'm gonna gang stack stack the uh, edges there. So I I do I don't know what am I up to? About one two three four of them. I, I wouldn't I couldn't go much higher, so I just get a clamp there and just go around and when you clamp the best isn't like so much how many clamps you put is where you put it like look around when you're clamping it and if you see a little gap there it's like bending wood wood yes wood's not going to be perfect and you know clamp it there that'll be your lowest point and i'll bring everything else down it's always a little tricky with with clamps i think the clamp uh should be a course in itself in a lot of ways it, it could be the most daunting thing to learn and i'm wiping the glue with a rag getting it down and then then i guess the next day you know you're going to be taking these apart so you don't want big blobs of glue there and letting it dry then taking a chisel after it. i hate doing that because it it could i, I slipped and it could take a chunk of the wood out all right now i'm just taking my joiner i'm just eyeballing it there. i'm trying to take very little i think i'm at about it i got it set for about a sixteenth of an inch and I'm, I'm trying to go one pass each so i have the thickness the same but there are one or two where i had to go an extra pass and you know it's a pretty straightforward task if you don't have a joiner um I think it's going to be tough to, to do something this big. I'm not. I'm not going to sugarcoat it. Uh, you could do it with the planer and run it through, but you got to make sure that those are 90 to begin with. Because if you're crooked and you put them in crooked in the planer, it's going to come out crooked and it's going to cause you a lot of grief at the end. And here, here I go. Now I'm going to put them all through, and they're all going to be the exact same thickness. Uh, through I'm a, I think I believe it's about five and five and a half at the end of the day which is decent six was a little too chunky for the look and five and a half didn't look lost it created a statement but not too overpowering that that's the visual where I try to go I'm not trying to create some uh, chunky heavy-duty island no it's gonna have detail and it's gonna look a little delicate and refined and you know basically i get my exercise running back and forth um i don't know why i haven't lost more weight i guess that's another subject and i'm almost done i'm going one more pass on there on the other way now i got it both ways now i got the width and the thickness the exact same so this should save me a lot of headache Now I gotta figure out the spacing between here and the, the panel has to go. Now, with that, um, there's two ways of doing it. I'm just going it in my head, but somebody else that wants to follow, uh, you could just put the veneer right here, the veneer panel, and you still have that look and you have a nice base for it to protect your veneer. You'd be fine. But in my case, I'm, I'm putting a panel I, I, want it, I want that look, and what I'm trying to do is marry, not, not radical, but slightly different, all right? How does that work, slightly different? Okay, so what I gotta do is, these are five and a quarter, which is 5.25, 5 5.25, 5.25, uh, times 8 equals 42. So it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 8. Now, here's the tricky part where you can get screwed up. So you, now you get, I know that all these together are 42 inches. So in between here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Even though I have 8 posts, there's 7 spots in between. Alright, divide 
by seven equals six inches. Ooh. Now I totally screwed up on that. Let's go back. We know we got 42, right? You know what I screwed up on? This. Measure your length of all these cabinets. Remember, I'm one inch over, so I don't really care, right? Actually, I'm a little more, I'm an inch and a half. All right, so I'm an inch and a half over, and I'm okay with that. So I'm 164. again. 42 minus 164 minus 164 equals 122. All right, divide by 7. Let's see if I do it right this time. 122 divide by 7 equals 17 and a half. It's 0.42. All right, that's about right. What I did here is I just visually laid them out. I went 18 inches, but the last part I knew I was off. All right. So that's my number, 17 and a, 17 and a half. All right, so now I'm going to make my rail and style. I have my wood right behind us here, and I'm going to mill it up. I'm going to mill it up on, on two counts. I'm going to talk rail, it's going to be about five inches, and I'm going to tell you why in two seconds. There's a light that's going to go here, a light balance that's, that's going to come down. I want the light coming down. It's going, to look, it's going to be a wicked effect with the shadows, and that's part of what I'm doing here. I love, I love the drama that light can have with cabinet making and with, with the shadows and everything else I have. This should really look wicked, all right? So I'm very excited. It's a Sunday and I'm in love right now being cabinet maker. I was really bummed out about this. I was bummed out about all the administrative work I had to do with the house from hell, like trying to get it going. So I'm very happy being in here. I only have one more Thing to figure out from the house from L for an engineer for the concrete, but I'll do a little video on that. All right, so let's go find out how I make out. Now I'm doing the frames that are going to go in between the posts. Uh, another thing to take in consideration with this island, it's almost 15 feet, is the plugs. Um, your code really is every nine uh, square feet and in this case being I want to go 48 inches or four feet by 15 that means I have to have seven plugs uh, I got this information from PBG on YouTube T Google him he has all the codes I've been kind of uh, oblivious I just put one or two plugs or whatever on a lot of other jobs but it really wasn't my uh, responsibility it was really electricians and the uh, general contractors but a lot of a lot of them really don't understand that you have to put that many plugs in so I'm not going to get flat-footed here and here I am I'm using the biscuit joiner now the biscuit joiner is a godsend buy this before you buy the Craig thing or whatever the that jig uh, you won't regret it learn use this to its maximum then if you really feel you have to use the uh, Craig jig, then use it. These joints won't open up. I've been doing this for over 20 years, and I, I've done made doors, everything else. I don't get any callbacks, and that's a real testament of construction. You know, you, I could have used lap joints, but it, I, it would have been overkill, because when you see when I construct it, I got it locked in both ways. All right. Now I'm almost at the end there. I made my little jig there to hold it down, and now this is the most important thing. Now, tribon glue sucks. Use Lepage; it's their glue, hands down the best glue, the most underrated glue. Period. Very hard to get, like by a gallon, but use it. And now I'll get into tribon later. Like the uh, what happens is when it gets when it gets hot or it gets wet it softens and your joints loosen up 
with the lapage it won't it becomes part of the wood now I'm gluing there you know what's important to make sure it's flat on the clamps that it's sitting down you can see me tapping there and as I'm putting the pressure on and trying to keep it up sometimes you slip a little with the biscuits and it might be a little off but sometimes I, I like that because I know it's really tight with the biscuits so I don't mind just taking a little bit of a clamp there a little block and just putting it there keep a little extra pressure in a certain spot and there again I wipe it down with water um, I'm gonna be sanding these so it won't be an issue now the next one is I got to get the posts lined up with these and I got to keep it simple so I'm just going to do a simple dado which is simple groove I'm going I'm going good side and putting a groove about a little over three quarters about seven eighths because that that wood's about seven eighths and it doesn't matter if you're a little less doesn't it doesn't line up with the post a little over won't we'll, we'll make a deal what's important this has to be exact each one that's the critical thing with this or you're if you're off your your whole thing's going to be off when you do that many panels all right so i'm um, going face down uh, do i have a jig there to um, hold it there if i'm going to hold it 90. i could make one you know if i'm going to slip i'm pretty confident that i'm 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 good enough i'm not going to slip uh, you'll see on the assembly part uh why i was careful with it and it wouldn't have made a difference anyways and that's really it uh now with with that groove when i get that post in i, I got a shoulder to kind of keep me honest you know and just you know uh don't tip when you when you're feeding it like that keep your pressure at the bottom now here's one of my first posts i'm gluing so just you know get the glue i didn't really smear it with a brush or whatever i didn't want it too much near the edges leaking out so i just go there put a c clamp at one end and i'm putting a pressure tight into it but you got to be careful there again make sure where that post is that it's sitting flat with that clamp that exactly flat there you can put too much pressure and it'll be like a potato chip I saw it was because I got the pressure with the clamps pulling on top, so I'm pulling it up ever so slightly like that. But it would be a disaster because I want these to join now with the other panel in the middle. So I, I could end up like a potato chip and it'd be too much stress and I crack it to try to straighten it out. So how I'm telling is I got a nice straight edge here and you might not be able to see there, but it's about a healthy eighth of an inch. So what I did is I just went like this to my table and then kind of bring it down. You can already see that I'm going down now. And then at least ever so slightly here. I don't want it to open up too much. Now I'm going to go on the other side. This one I don't know if I'm going to get this thing strong enough to pull it down. This one's pretty cheap. It's not, it's not a lot of pressure, just enough to hold it down. Alright. Now I got it. Like you see, I can tell there that it's sitting flat. Alright? Now I'm going to get a little shot here. I kind of opened it. I get a little gap here, but you know, I, I can live with that one. That's because I. And then that's it. That's the biggest thing sometimes when you when you do things the first time. Sometimes you make stupid mistakes, eh? All right. And I guess here, well, did I make a stupid mistake? Yeah. See you tomorrow. <clears throat> All right, I'm going to glue my last piece. Uh, it was a challenge. It was like getting these ones last here together after the other pieces was hard. Now, 
this part I want to keep here, right? So I'm going to go here, slide it in. But I already know for a fact I'm a little higher here. Like, it's because of the concrete here on the floor. This table's pushed up. And then take a quick peek. And yeah, it's, it's exactly what I thought, eh? You know, I'm a, I'm a little higher there um, with that table. Now, should I glue it and then worry about the flex? Or, or get a clamp, push the table out of the way, and then just put a uh, support, you know? But I'm definitely, like, see that? I'm definitely a lot higher. Because if you come here, you know, I could do this with my six foot level, but the answer would be the same. Um, I'm flat, so I'm kind of like, you know, bummed out because uh, like there's a big hump here on the floor. So, well, you know what? Let's glue it in. All right, let's get it screwed. And the hell with it, we'll push that table out of the way. Now the challenging part was the last uh, two panels together. I've been doing gluing them individually, and then as they're individual, then put them together, try to put them together as one. Uh, where it's like 15 feet, so uh, you know it has to be straight. You can see what I did there, clamp. I kept it down on the table so it's flat. I got my six foot level there, and I'm making sure everything's nice and straight that I'm not buckling up because if I buckle it up and it's like a potato chip I don't think I could straighten it out without ripping it open so the part of that table that's there is higher than the other part the concrete on the shop's not even so I had to improvise on the spot for the glue setup so I just pulled the table out put a piece of st uh, stick there and then took the level and I, I got it it's sitting nice and flush so I'm going to do a little victory dance and I'm putting a couple of screws in there. I'm just using drywall screws. Uh, you can use the Craig. I have nothing wrong with that. Uh, the reason why I use drywall screws, they have the threads and they pull it tight. And they won't interfere with the wood. What I mean is if it moves, they'll, they'll crack. It's done. It's together. Um, what you, what you can do as you go along, you know, get it, get something that you know is straight, and just take a look that you're straight all the way along. You know, take from that one. Now I'm, I'm almost perfect, and the same with here. I'm sitting very nice here. I'm sitting very nice here, and well, what I was surprised about, I was ready. If I, you know, because you can do a mistake with this, and the way I did this lengthwise with the pan of squeezing it, you can force it up, but you, you can be a little bit off on the edge. And from one end to the other, I'm a 30 second off, and I'm not staging this to say, yeah, great, I was lucky. But I, I did take my time. And the last thing, if you see here where the panel now goes, and you saw there we got our our little dado right here and it's locked in here so now that edge that meets here has a biscuit and it's locked in there so this is like stupid strong plus with one thing I love about African mahogany it, it, it it's, it's one of the most stable woods I can really now I'm putting the baseboard on and you know, I got the little bump out, so it took me till the end to figure out, well, I guess I better uh, do the old tape trick um, than trying to put the little piece in, then the bigger piece on top. It was really hard to do that. Um, I'm keeping pressure on the clamp. Uh, I'm not 45-ing the inside, the very further part, just butting it in, but it, the out part I am. And the reason why I didn't bother it, you're not going to tell a difference on a straight piece. And it just made it a lot easier for me. So I tape it there, line it up, and I take a little off, 
tape it back up and there we go then there's the glue and remember the end grain will always drink a lot of that glue uh, it soaks up like a sponge I'm using the brad nailer to hold it in then clamp it because if you start clamping right away it would just slip out and it's really a gentle clamp uh, try not to over clamp it you know if you're like a 30 second over that can easily be fixed but if you pull it out it then it can really look bad now in between uh, I just put that piece in first and kind of I'm using the bottom of the post to line it up if I follow that I'll be true from one end to the other but the point thing is with the baseboard or you're following if you go a little over that that can really cause problems on install but if you're a little under and there's an eighth of an inch gap you won't you won't see it at all so I had to use two saws the um, the wall there on the left can handle five inch vertically I prefer going vertically when I go down like that than going cross cutting it's hard to cross cut and, and get it accurate going there you know when I when I go vertical I have so much more control and I can feed and I just find I get better cuts uh, the only thing with the Bosch it can't quite do five inches the the way the arbor is it hits the back so it doesn't clear so go figure now I, I make sure the glue's clean like I said I don't want a nightmare at the end um, I I did have some ooze out on the panel which I, I wasn't happy you know because it can the, the water can have a little um, bit of I don't know a little bit of iron or a little bit of impurities and you can see it in the finishing when you go after so I, I, I did it knowing that that I'm gonna have to sand after and here comes the other part and there again same thing just take the pin brad nailer and pin away and then just adjust and I kind of do I don't know three or four ahead then I'll take the other clamps I had enough time to set up and then I'll move them on to the other one so I don't run out now the last piece and you can see that I'm just tracing lay the piece there trace it also with the other uh, square there I could do a 45 trace the 45 on tops and this way you won't make a mistake if I tr tried to measure this stuff it'd be a mental case because I'd, I'd be off on a lot of those cuts so try to make it simple for yourself and you, you know you you really won't have much uh, issue with it in the sense that you know you won't have those stupid mistakes it was a couple uh, I won't lie I did a couple too short and then the really small ones you only have one shot at it you, I wouldn't dare try and hold it or try and cut it and there we go now what I'm really after is I want to finish with no gaps and you can't beat making this one piece um, now I'm taking the orbital here like I'm using the air uh, but just a little little more finesse uh, lighter not as heavy as the big Bosch one I have and I'm just going along I'm doing the flat part first and I'm taking an 80 and now I'm switching into 120 because I've already had the wood sanded now I'm just going on the edge and just rounding it ever so slightly the only thing I'll say don't use a jitterbug I regret doing it I left marks there and it showed up on the finishing I'm throwing it in the garbage it's only good if you're going with the grain if you got cross grain it came out like crap now I'm staining first before I put the panels in because because the panels are a veneer and I don't want them to, to look so black and you know so this is delicate right now like they look very light and I'm uh, 
the veneer we use for the panels is the same as we use on the doors. We have that video on how we made the doors and how we laminated. Exact same thing. And I've also created a separate video on the finishing to show how I brought out the color. Because it was really an art and kind of making that color explode. But at the same time, it is a kitchen and it could be a disaster if you make it too complicated. You could end up blotchy all over the place, not having consistent color. So please subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. The next finishing video that's companion to this video will be out very, very soon. So all I can say is please, please subscribe. We need your support and I'll do more videos. Thank you so much for watching.